God is doing to my life in this commission because I know when I, when I was in still the other uh, church, but since I joined this living faith in Delta State to worry, since that time, praise is, he has come my lifestyle. Different state, I go in most states. In fact, I can't count for business. Yet, day before yesterday, I go for my business in Joss. I don't know that there is crisis there, but God said that wherever his people go, nothing shall hurt them. And I go that journey, very fine, nothing happened to us. As I come back, my brother called me there that there is something is moving now in Joss, which God deliver me. I just want to give God thanks. And two days ago, my pastor was driving, passing, so... Finally, God has delivered him to the glory of his name. He went and returned. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. I am by name Mark Terry. I am here to return all the glory for the Lord added, added a year unto my year yesterday. Hallelujah. There shall be commotion of addition for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Honor Jaina Rose. I thank God for adding another extra year to my beautiful life yesterday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am Dr. Elemona Adolfo. I have two testimonies. One, my wife has been suffering from fibroid for some time now. It got to a point she was afraid when the doctor said that she should be operated for the removal of the fibroid. About a month ago, we came to our father in the house, and he said, don't be afraid, go and remove it. That brought courage on us. We went in for the operation, and it was successful. <laughs> Five days after we left the hospital, the devil came to challenge my health. It was a terrible situation for those who saw me. In fact, for those who don't know the God I serve, they have given up already. For six days, I was having serious stomach pain. I couldn't sit, I couldn't lie, I couldn't stand, stand up. This continued for about six days. We went to the hospital, ran all sorts of tests. In fact, they mentioned so many names and I keep rejecting them. At a point, my wife said, Dal, what are you doing to me? I said, I'm not doing anything. I cannot die. It is not possible for me to die because I have a covenant with my God. Uh, last week, Friday, my wife managed to drive me to the church here and we met our daddy in the house. And immediately he saw the situation. He ordered that I should be brought to this altar. I, he made me lie down on this altar and he prayed for me. What seems impossible became possible. Today I am standing before you. God has healed me completely. And I have come to return all glory to the God of this commission. To God alone be the glory. There shall be no loss in the name of Jesus. Please fast straight to the point. God bless. Praise the Lord. Identity praise delay is the name. I'm here to thank God of what happened to me on the 10th of September 2018. I woke up in the morning. I found out that I had no gas. So I drove down to go and buy. Reaching there, I saw people standing. Then I asked why. They said they will not sell now. I immediately moved. After about 30 minutes, I learned of what happened. I have come here to give thanks to God that was with me that I'm alive to say my story. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. There shall be no loss in this assembly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is my new dawn era. My name is Mrs. Stella Uche. I've come to return all the glory to God who delivered me from accident yesterday evening. There is this uh, member, and uh, she, she's in my home cell. She, I have not been seeing her in the church, and she has not been coming from home cell. Anytime I call her, she will say she's coming, and she will not come. So yesterday I called her, she said she's coming, and she did not come. When we finished home cell, I decided to go and visit her. So as I went to her, she started telling me a lot of stories why she stopped coming to church. I encouraged her, and I prayed for her. As I was coming back, I stood up to five minutes on the road for vehicles to clear. 
And immediately as I was crossing the main road, and a bike without light just hit me. But I shouted, Jesus, there shall be no loss, and I am on a mission. So nothing shall happen to me. I just stood up, and nothing happened to me. I have come to the tunnel the glory to God. Can you clap better to the glory of God? It could have been a different story. Praise the Lord. My name is Eunice Solomon. I'm here to give God the glory for what he has done in my life and my family. Three years ago, my, my elder sister called me to tell me she was pregnant for her third child. And after a while, the pregnancy just disappeared. It wasn't as if there was a sack. It disappeared. Her body was as if there was no pregnancy. So we started praying, believing God. All the hospitals she went to, she was told that she's just imagining pregnancy, that there was nothing. And then during the covenant day of breaking generational causes, a uh, pastor declared that the following day we'll be praying for families. I brought her picture. I laid it on the floor. When, when it was time for sprinkling, I sprinkled the blood on the picture. And then finally, day before yesterday, that baby was delivered after three years without being seen in the womb. I've come to return all the glory. Come on, church. This can only be God. Give the Lord a shout of the glory of His holy name. After three years. It is my new dawn era. I am Olumide Shashere by name. I want to bless the name of God for the salvation of my soul because He's still saving me to the uttermost. Um, I want to thank God for giving me a brand new laptop that worth 130,000 naira at the rate of 30,000 naira. I want to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Igiri Patience. I have come to return all glory to the Most High God for delivering my mother and my younger brother from the disease of typhoid fever. Hi, Typhoid. And I've also come to thank God for providing for me even before I request for, for his protection over my life and that of my family. And I also want to give thanks to God Almighty for adding another beautiful and wonderful year to my dad's year yesterday. I've come to return all glory unto his name. Hallelujah. Church, praise God. Hallelujah. My name is Obaro Inye. I've come to return all the glory to this wonderful God. Last month, August, last month, I came to meet our dad in the house. I, I was telling him that my sister, suitors have been coming, that you know, I will one come, we will not see the person again. Then the second person that came, my uncle said, is it to bring suitors that they should come and do the price? So I was, as I was telling him, I started crying. He now told me, is that the reason why you are crying? So after that, he gave me prayer point for me and my sister. I went home, I sent it to them via WhatsApp. We fasted and prayed. Then after the prayer, I came back the next week to, for him to pray for me. He laid hand on my head and prayed for me. Then the next day, I returned home. In the morning, my mom called me. She said, did your sister tell you anything? I said, no. She said right now that she's in the village. That the same second home that came, that the man told him to go and bring this for traditional wedding and the white wedding. I've come to, they've done the traditional, they've done the white wedding. I've come to say to this great God, may his name be praised. Thank you, Father. God is frustrating every frustration in this service this morning. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our side. Your seated position, lift up your hands. Let's wave to him as we give him all the glory for this great testimony. Father, we thank you. Be blessed forever. In Jesus' precious name. Please give him a big hand. One more. Let what has not happened before happen today. Amen. Turn that into your prayer right now. What has not happened before by this impartation, let it happen for me in this service. Let this service bring to pass the hand of God's blessing upon my life. Let it terminate every frustration. Let it break every invisible barrier. The roots of every affliction, let them dry up. Lord, I am going home from this service transformed. Something unique is answering for me in this service. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Whatever look like an evil veil that has been covering you, Today, that evil veil will be destroyed. 
any form of cobweb the enemy has fired against anyone here by this impartation today that witchcraft power will die if you are saying amen say a better amen whatever is behind the frustration you are going through in your career and in your job in your academics i decree their roots terminated by fire in the mighty name of jesus christ today god will give you laughter god will turn your morning into rejoicing in the name of jesus christ so shall it be in jesus name we have prayed make that amen sounding again put those hands together for the lord and please take your seat god bless you still in our series of teaching is there no bomb in gilead we take the last part of this teaching for the month of september 2018 understanding your right to total health and also just like we did in the first service terminating the power behind frustration in the first service we looked at the power behind spiritual frustration in this second service we are taking the power behind career and business frustration and in the third service we are going to focus the power behind family and financial stagnation praise God total head is your right in Christ but if you don't enforce it you will not live in it what you don't make happen no one can make it happen talk John and verse 2 I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health God wants you to be but you cannot be if you don't press to be God wants you to be but you cannot be if you don't press to be any state of health you enjoy you pressed into it you don't wish total health you press your way into total health And one vital tool God has given to each and every one of us to make total health a reality is the tonic of joy. Like we are meant to understand in the first service, your joyful state determines your healthy state. If you are not joyful, you cannot live healthy. If you are not joyful, you cannot live healthy. Someone can wish you happiness, but no one can wish you joyful. It has already been programmed in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It has already been programmed. The moment you are born again, Scripture says we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit at redemption. So that seal of the Holy Spirit gave me and you access to the rivers of joy because the Holy Ghost is the custodian of the joy of the Lord. So the moment you are sealed with the seal of salvation at redemption, you have access to the joy of the Spirit. Someone can make you happy, but you decide your true state of joy. You decide it. Also, at baptism of the Holy Ghost, another 
dimension is released upon us, it is called the oil of joy. The oil of joy. Scripture calls it the oil of joy for money and the spirit of what? Let's read it, Isaiah chapter 63. I mean chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. And look at verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. And the garment of praise for the spirit of what? Heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. The oil of joy for money and the spirit of praise for heaviness. This is what the Holy Ghost impacts in us at baptism. At this point, you cannot stay joyless. You cannot be less of the joy that God has put inside of you. Scripture say, out of him shall flow rivers. So there is a river of joy inside each and every one of you. You are not a well that dry and come back when rain come. You are a tanker loaded with joy that cannot be exhausted. You are an ocean of joy. You cannot just suddenly go sad. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I like us to understand also our joy contributes to our healthy living. Our joy. If you are living healthy now, hear me? There is something you are enjoying that you don't know. The moment you lose your joy, Scripture say, and joy is withered away from the sons of men. When joy is withered away, health is dried up. So losing your joy can be very dangerous. Someone can give you money now does not mean that you are joyful. Are you not saying now? Because there are people that have the money and they are still not joyful. True or false? Please, where is that uh, Mrs. Solomon? Please come. The Holy Ghost has interrupted me two times. Did you understand that testimony? I'm not sure you understood it. They told the sister, you are just imagining that you are pregnant. Come, come, come. I'm not sure they understood the testimony. You, did you say after three years? Yes, sir. Did yes, you sir. say after three years? Yes, sir. After three years, the baby came out? Yes, oh, my God. Everybody rise up. Wherever they suspended your blessing, they will release it now. Oh, <laughs> my
as a point of contact. No more delay. No more delay. No more delay. Any witchcraft power they are using to hide your blessing. Let their power fail. It is done. Congratulations. Put your hands together for the Lord. And be seated. Praise God. Your joy determine your healthy state. In fact, joy is the life wire for healthy living. Say with me, life wire. With joy shall you draw. <laughs> if you are joyless, you are like one that goes to the well to fetch water and you don't have rope. What will you draw? So you are always at the mercy of people that come to fetch water. So when they fetch, they will now borrow you their rope and you will draw. What will happen in the night when you will need water? Who will you go and knock in his house? To give you rope. When you are joyless, you are ropeless. You can't draw anything. That is why I want to let you know you are responsible for your being joyful. If you are sad, nobody do you, now you do yourself. Because no one has access into your heart. Scripture says no one knows the thoughts of a man except the man himself. If you are depressed, you did it to yourself. No one did it to you. Proverbs 17 and verse 22. Proverbs 17 and verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a, a broken spirit dried the bone. Do it good like. So merriment is like someone taking a vitamin C. Every morning you take vitamin C. Afternoon, take vitamin C. Night, you take vitamin C. So merriment is vitalizing the body. It vitalizes the body. It releases vitality. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Merriment energizes the body. Merriment charges your system. So if you are not merry, you are mourning. For you, a child of God, the reason why you are not permitted to mourn or sorrow is because you have a tanker. Say with me, a tanker. <laughs> you are carrying a spiritual tanker inside of you called the Holy Ghost. Why? Scripture says, out of him shall flow rivers of living water. So every time you are joyful, there is a flow. There is a flow. There is a flow, a flow that cannot be stopped. A flow that cannot be stopped. The reason why the Holy Ghost is given to us as a seal is so that anywhere you go, you create your joy. Anywhere you find yourself, you create your joy. You create your joy. You create it. Nobody will create it for you. You create your joy. If you are frowning, you are losing something. And you know, Satan is very smart. He will do everything possible using anyone that is available to steal your joy. Can use anybody to steal your joy. You can't steal my own. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I won't allow you. Because whoever steals your joy 
has exposed you to the presence of Satan. The moment you lose your joy, you have lost touch with the presence of God. No wonder David cried out, Restore to me the joy of my salvation. He said, Cast me not away from your presence. If you lose your joy, you lose his presence. You lose it. And when you lose it, you come under torment. You enter into a state of depression. A state of confusion. A state of worry. A state where evil voices are now compounding your head. That's why you must not lose your joy. Because the more joyful you are, the more vitalized your body becomes. I'd like us to understand because of the seal of the Holy Ghost and being the reason why we cannot go joyless, we are not permitted to lack his presence. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, joy is so powerful to the point that it has power to create pleasures all around you. It's so powerful. But you don't want to take advantage of it. Some people are only excited and happy when money is in their hand. Now, to, to know whether you are truly joyful, eh? to know whether you are truly joyful, anytime there is no money in your pocket, everybody will know. Am I saying the truth? Everybody will know that there is no money in this person's pocket. Because the countenance will change. Everything will change. Now, did they send you to school to make money or to read book? To make money. No, first things first. To do what? Now, but have you noticed that any time there is no money, there is no concentration? You are with me? <laughs> there is no concentration, no? It's like psychologically you are destabilized. That goes to let you know that what truly controls your joy is not what is in your hand. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Did, that, did you hear me well? Yes, it's not in your hand. It's the Holy Ghost. Because there are others, whether there is money or not, you won't see it on their face. You won't see it on their countenance. Jesus said, Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. If circumstance determines when you are joyful, you are not truly joyful. If what is happening determines when you are joyful, you are not truly joyful. Because in the meaning is that if that thing is not there, you will break down. So your true state of joy determines your true state of health. A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a dry, a dry spirit. A dry spirit can mean a dry pocket. Because when your pocket is dry, your spirit is dry. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man for your spirit man to sustain you, the implication is that your spirit is charged. 
only a charged spirit can change, can hold a charged life. If your spirit is not charged, it can't put you in charge. So you must be careful what you allow to make you frown. Like I said before, <laughs> Jerry Savage said, if Satan cannot steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. He can't keep your goods. Having the Holy Ghost as a spiritual tanker is an asset. It makes you ever buoyant, flowing with joy, ever excited. Don't lose your joy. If you lose it, you suffer for it. If you lose it, your mind will suffer. If you lose it, your body will suffer. If you lose it, your spirit will suffer. Joy is a spirit. It's more than an event. It's more than a situation. Joy is a spirit. That's why the scripture calls it the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. There is a spirit that makes people joyful. There is a spirit also that makes people frown. You use more muscles to frown than you use less muscles to laugh. Anytime you frown, you are using nothing less than 72 muscles. Twin. Are you hearing it now? I remember there was a sister. She was just growing lean, growing lean. Out of concern, my boss said, they should go and they call one of the doctors. They should run a test on her. They ran every test, nothing. The nurse said, come, come, what's doing you? What's doing you? They just discovered that um, a brother disappointed her by saying he's not doing a gay. <laughs> so she started emanciating. She started emanciating. Because the thoughts that came then we were thinking it was HIV. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We we're thinking it was HIV. So some people that, uh, that are emanciating now, something is doing them. Oh. <laughs> I'm the one telling you now. Nah. <laughs> don't kill yourself for nothing if a brother leaves you thank God he's not the right person what if after, after marrying you not go and butcher you and go and do money, uh, money medicine has it not happened before it has happened this year you are getting drunk I love you I love you I love you I love you <laughs> now for bag he go put you if someone leaves you, be happy that God has taken one evil away from your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Okay, what, what, what if now you went and married the wrong husband? You now say, oh Lord, why did you allow this to happen? And God has quietly allowed it to happen and you are still squeezing and frowning. You don't know it's a deliverance. Or you think all deliverance is only when they put oil on your head and say, Come out! Come out! <laughs> oh, you don't know? You think it's every deliverance that say, Come out by fire! Come out! No! There are some deliverance that does not require come out by fire. God can just naturally allow the thing to scatter. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? To pave way for the right person. You are just squeezing yourself. They check you, nothing they do you. Check your heart, nothing they do you. But Holy Spirit knows that something is doing you. Eat, you know what? Eat. Tell your neighbor, eat. eat. Do you know why? If you die for nothing, the brother goes to marry. Don't go and kill yourself for nothing. You go marry, go heaven where? So recover. Tell your neighbor, recover, recover, recover. Now, we have always been looking at bodily sickness. There are some terrible emotional sickness which microscope and stethoscope cannot see. You are just dying emotionally for nothing. A merry heart doeth good 
like mess. Somebody leaves you. Thank God. Are you the first person that they will say, I'm not doing it again? You are not the first and you will not be the last. Sure? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Tell your neighbor, be excited. Your future is too great. I say your future is too loaded. I say your future is too loaded. How can you allow one situation to cast you down? Don't allow it. Tell your neighbor, don't allow it. There are things you must not allow. If you are not joyful, let me tell you now, as a student, if you are not joyful, you are robbed of creativity. Because lack of joy makes you lose memory. People that are not joyful, go and check it. I tell you the truth and I lie not. They suffer memory loss. Doctor is here, ask him. After service, come and ask doctor. Do you know that depression affects your thinking? You can't be depressed and think well. Your thoughts are corrupted with virus. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Instead of thinking well, you are thinking bad, feeling bad, feeling pain in the heart. Before you know what's happening, it's affecting your whole system. And if you are not careful, you may catch stroke or high blood pressure. Go and check people that caught high blood pressure. It was not witchcraft that gave it to them. It was bad feeling. Bad thinking. So, if you are joyful, you don't know what you are doing to yourself. You are conditioning your life for longevity. You are conditioning your life for longevity. So, stop feeling sad. Whatever you are feeling bad, God has already programmed it to be better in the future. It may be bad today, but not forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? No one that scripture said, in Proverbs 23 and verse 18, surely there is an end. There is an end to every pain. There is an end to every crisis. There is an end to every wrong situation. Surely there is an end and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Do you know there's a way you can cry and get headache? Am I correct? Yes, sir. Some people have, have experience. Yes, you cry to the point that headache everywhere. Panadol, no fee cure that can headache. So please maintain your joy. You are responsible for your joy. Should I tell you something? You are the goalkeeper of your joy. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Life has too many issues. You will still meet many more issues in front. So guard your heart now. If you don't guard it, you will not be able to solve the one in the future. Guard your heart with all diligence. Be diligent in protecting what you allow into your heart. Because what makes you sick is what you allow into your heart. Guard your heart. And you know what? You are making it difficult for the Holy Ghost to keep you joyful by allowing worry and painful thoughts into your heart. You are making it more difficult. You are corrupting the environment of his operation. Making it more difficult for him to operate. Every time you allow bad, bad thoughts, evil thoughts. Like I said in the first service, some people are not joyful because of what people say. Don't die for nothing. No. Jesus said, Woe is you when men speak well of you. We may be close to 2,000 here now. Don't expect 100 to speak well of you. In fact, 100 is too much. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Woe is you. Woe means cost is you when men speak well of you. If you are expecting everybody, 
to be singing your praise. Lie, lie. Don't expect it. Don't expect it. Even if it were to be happening before, there are spiritual virus, agents of Satan, that will go and begin to sow Baba seed, begin to rubbish you, blackmail you, leave them. Like I said in the first service, it is their ministry. Allow them to fulfill their ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Or do you want to join the ministry? <laughs> Why don't you want to join the ministry? It is their ministry. Their ministry is to talk. Their ministry, they must talk. They must talk. Oh. Now, do you know that if you are doing well, people will talk? If you are not doing well, people will still talk. I beg, keep doing well, let them be talking. They go talk, 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 talk. Their portion will be talking. Why your portion will be blessing? Pastor, have you heard what they are saying about me? Are you the first? You are not the first. And you will never be the last. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They go talk. Oh. And you know, talking has been made easy now. What's up? Before you know what's happening now, it will go viral. Talking. Allow them to talk. I remember in my first year, one of the brothers that canceled me after we gave our life to Christ, Eric Magre. I saw him after 1991, when we gave our life to Christ on campus, I saw him in Benin in 2014. I said, Eric, what are you doing here? He said, I just, oh, I just came for my sister's wedding. I've been in London all this while. I said, you remember what you told me? Remember what you told me in year one? He said, I can't remember. He said, if you want to last long, go and buy padlock and lock your ear. He said, go and buy a big padlock and lock your ear. Because what people will say about you can kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He said, if what people say, kill people, he said, well, I will have died long ago. Some people are sick now because of what people say. Don't die for nothing. If you allow what people say to affect your health, you are not allowing what God says to promote your health. Thy words we are found. And I did eat them. And they became to me the joy and rejoicing of my soul. So more word, more health. My son, pay attention to my word. Incline thy ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from thy heart. Neither turn away thy eyes from them. For they are life unto thee and health unto thy whole flesh. Proverbs 4, 20, 21, 20, 21. Health unto thy whole flesh. Health unto thy whole flesh. So our immunity is sustained by the word. You lose your immunity when you focus on the wrong thing. You begin to lose your immunity. Instead of focusing on what God say, you are focusing on what men say. Focus on his word. Because your immunity is in his word. Don't allow what they say to afflict your head. And that brings us to the point... Of noting this, the more joyful you are, the more praiseful you become. You can't truly be joyful and not be praiseful. And you cannot truly be praiseful and not enjoy God's presence. Because there is a spiritual connectivity between praise and his presence. A truly praising man cannot lack the presence of God. The presence of God is a conditioner. 
it conditions us in total health. It makes it impossible for sickness to stay, neither for sickness to survive. Now hear me, afflictions are choked in his presence. Diseases, they are choked out of life. So stay joyful. Tell your neighbor, stay joyful. Hear this now. If you are not joyful, you may end up frustrated academically. You may end up frustrated business-wise. What does it mean to be frustrated? To be frustrated means when things are not going the way you want them to go in your academics in your business to be frustrated means doing your best to achieve a result but it's like the more you are giving in your best the more you are getting a low turnout To be frustrated means when the answer you desire in your career, in your business, in your academics is contrary to what you are getting. It creates frustration. To be frustrated also means when nothing seems to be working and yet it is working for others frustration is setting we are you designed to be frustrated academically no i want to let you know frustration creates Emperor sets back. Frustration creates what we call retard progress. Your progress is retard. To retard means instead of going forward, you are now sliding backward. Frustration means in business, instead of the business to be blooming, it's now fading away. Should I tell you something? Dollar being 360 is not the reason why your business is not moving. It's not the reason why business is not moving. Are there people prospering? Are there people going forward? If there are people going forward, then you don't have any reason to stay frustrated. To be frustrated means your ideas are not being turned into reality. It creates moments of frustration. But hear me. If your ideas are not being turned into reality, I want to let you know there are some things that you need to know that you have not known. If you are not doing well now, it does not mean that you will never do well. Should I shock you? You can have first class in electrical electronics. Come and have first class in life. First class paper is not access to first class life. True or false? Did you hear me where? Don't go and die for nothing. One of my members in Rayfield told me a very pathetic story. The daughter was schooling in the UK. She failed one course. And because she failed one course, she took a drug and killed herself. Say with me, frustration. frustration. There are powers behind it. Why will you 
kill yourself. A cause that you can still write and pass. For what? Now, permit me to say this. You can be intelligent, but if you lack control on your emotion, you'll be frustrated. Because most academic and business frustration is lack of what we call emotional intelligence. You sabi book, but you don't get control. So even though you are intelligent and you are doing well, and things are no longer happening the way you want it, have control over them. Failure is an experience, not an identity. So it must not create any moment of frustration for you. If you allow it to create frustration for you, Satan will take advantage of it and destroy your destiny. He will take advantage of it and destroy your destiny. Hear this? The target of the enemy by giving you frustration in your career and in your business is to slow you down. My master told me, if Satan cannot stop you, he will do everything to frustrate you, to slow you down. The rate at which this person is going is going too far. Let's do everything we can to slow him down. Are you the first to fail? No, answer me. Are you the first to fail? Didn't Michael Faraday fail? Or you didn't hear of Michael Faraday? He failed many times. He failed many times before you were enjoying this thing that you are seeing now. True or false? Failure is an experience, not an identity. Every time you fail, you learn something new. Failure increases experience. Not to damage your destiny. So don't get frustrated. I like the way Zig Ziglar put it. What you call mistake is simply put, there are two words there, miss and take. Meaning you missed the taking. Meaning you can take it back again. True or false? Who has heard of CRO7? CRO7. Eh? Has he missed penalty before? Did this stop him from becoming the world best player? Why are you killing yourself now? Has Messi missed penalty before? Did this stop him from becoming the world best player? You will get to the best God has in mind for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Don't allow one moment of failure create a long time of frustration. Kill it. Tell your neighbor, kill it. Like I said in the first service again, and I repeat it here now. If you keep going frustrated, meaning you are investing in your frustration. What does it mean to invest in your frustration? You keep allowing it to dominate your heart. In the morning, you will think about it. In the afternoon, you will be chopping it. In the night, you will be drinking it. When you are sleeping, you are dreaming it. You are investing in your frustration. So you have made frustration an investment. And do you know what? If you make frustration an investment, even if they present a cheap paper before you, the same thing will keep telling you, you will fail again. You will fail again. You will fail again. You just say, excuse me, sir. I'm not doing it again. They say, what's the problem? No, 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 I'm not doing it again. I'm just hearing now, I will fail again. Meaning you are not in control. The force is controlling you. You are not in control. They asked Warren Buffett, have you failed in business? He said, I have failed and I have bounced back many times.
Have I failed in business? Plenty. Have I bounced back more than two million times? In fact, anyone that I fail, I put up new discipline, new decision. Yes. And it's helping me to go forward. You will get there. I said you will get there. They asked Papa, have you made mistake? <laughs> Papa said, Papa said, I have been more wrong than you think that I have been right. I have been more wrong than you think that I have been what? Right. The fact that I was wrong does not mean that my dream is crashed. Your dream is not crashed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. A man was insulted because he did not go to school. And because of that insult, he did not allow it to weigh him down. He did not only go to school, he built a university. How many of us know that Ora Robot did not attend any university other than the one he built called Ora Robot University? Tell your neighbor, there is hope for you. Don't carry frustration like a bag that cannot be offloaded. Many of us are carrying academic frustration as if it cannot, be frust it cannot be offloaded. Now hear me, even if a lecturer is getting you frustrated, you can wind him out of the way. It's only a sign that you don't know your control point. A lecturer threatening you, he will not survive it. In my final year, we took a course called Marine Geology. They brought this lecturer from Oceanography and Marine Research. He has never been with us. He just came back from wherever he came from. I was just speaking through his nose to confuse everybody. Because the lecturer that was supposed to take this course was on sabbatical. So we just managed to hear him. His note was not even comprehensive. How much more to understand it? The day we had to write that exam, everybody was crying. They said, Tony, pray. Tony, pray. Tony, pray. I prayed. We wrote the exam. So, after the whole thing, I was not hearing. He said, nobody passed. I said, God punish your father. <laughs> your father. Instead of you to reduce my results, you will go. I prayed against him. Do you know what I said? I said, Lord, for this man to dent my result, remove him. They took one decision one day and canceled his exam and used our test. Ah, don't shine. <laughs> Prayed against him. In fact, Professor Peter said, that man came on emergency. So why will he come and mess everybody up? He said, burn the paper! frustrates me, you go die for nothing. Don't allow anything frustrate you. Amen. You will make it. Amen. Now hear me, in case you didn't hear me well, you will make it! In your career, you will make it. In your academics, you will make it. Anyone that is looking at you now like a disappointment, God will disappoint their disappointments. Say amen like a believer. You are not a failure. You are a success going to happen. You are a success going to manifest. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Wait, you will see it. Wait! Tell your neighbor, wait! wait. Tell another person, wait. wait! Refuse to be frustrated. In your career, refuse to be frustrated. In your business, refuse to be frustrated. Scripture said, Rejoice not over me, O enemy of my soul. Though I fall, I will rise again. You will rise again. You will rise again. 
You will rise again. I say you will rise again. I say you will rise again. I heard of a little boy, a very close family in Benin. The child, I don't know how they describe them. Uh, they are not uh, physically okay, mentally okay. But funny enough, the owner of the school that is attending in U.S. was 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 once like that child is now a professor he told the mother he said you don't need to worry over this child i was once like this child and today i am a professor you are not a disappointment Amen. you are not a failure Amen. hear me write it down today is 30th the success that will come through you will shock everyone that have given up on you Write it down. I said so. The success that will come through you will shock everyone that have given up on you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. So if you were frustrated five times, increase your energy one thousand times. If you are saying amen, say better amen. That is why I want to assure someone here it can only get better. Amen. I say it can only get better. Amen. As this impartation come upon you scripture said and Joshua was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses has laid his hands on him. Every time we are privileged to partake of an impartation what majorly come upon us is the spirit of wisdom. So that you can see what others can see. So that you can dare what others can dare. So that you can go to where others can't get to. Rise up to your feet. The first prayer you are going to pray now. Lord, whatever has made me feel frustrated. Feel disappointed. Feel bitter. By the blood of Jesus. Let the yoke of academic and business frustration be wiped away. Any loss you have suffered, thank God for it. That you didn't lose your life. They asked Henry Ford, what will happen to Ford Corporation if they destroy everything that you have put on ground? Henry Ford looked at them and laughed and said, <laughs> if you destroy Ford Corporation, you have not touched anything. He said, what brought it is still here. I will produce 1,000 times better. Say with me, 1,000 times better. 1, times better. So no matter what you have lost now, God will increase you 1,000 times more better. So you are going to pray. Everything, anything that has made me feel disappointed, feel frustrated, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, let them be wiped away from my heart. Lift up your voice right now and begin to pray. Begin to pray from the depth of your heart. I refuse to end up frustrated. I refuse to end up frustrated. There is hope for my tomorrow. I refuse to end up frustrated. Any power that is behind frustration in my life, you are cursed in the name of Jesus. I break your hold in the name of Jesus. I destroy your manipulation in the name of Jesus. Lea Kopaka, Jekute Kepredia. Zisu saha leandolo jeketeria zekata prakate ligeres enzo za lebredi jeglozandi aleta riso keteria ba la zekete beketoria Thank you Father In Jesus name we are prayed
all eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. You want to make it right with Jesus? <laughs> he said, cast your care upon the Lord, for he careth for you. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavily burdened and are laden, and I will give you rest. God wants to give you rest from frustration. Wherever you are, you want to pray this prayer with me, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, come quickly. We want to pray with you before we enter into the impartation session. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. Put those hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you. If you are coming, come quickly. Come, come, come. Carry your back and your Bible and come. God bless you. God bless you. This is the best decision anyone can take. Inside and outside, God bless you. Put your hands together for the Lord. Yes, I'll be changed. I'll be And it's true. Lord Jesus anyone that come unto you shall you in no wise cast out they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior I decree by this impartation the guilt of the past they are rolled away whatever legal hold the enemy had over your life by subjecting you to frustration that yoke is destroyed your glorious destiny must manifest. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. Your glorious destiny must manifest amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever the enemy is doing against you, I decree that yoke is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Please remain standing wherever you are. Please, Pastor, lift up your voice. Lord, as this impartation come upon me, Whatever want to keep me in failure, by the impartation, let the yoke be destroyed. By this impartation, the heavens open for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do it faster. By this impartation, the heavens open for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fast, 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 fast. More people. More people. Uh, Obina. Aki. Uh, Joseph, quick, 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 enter. Fast, more people, more people, more people, more people. Lako Shakataria. Doctor, quick, quick, fast, fast. Give them one, quick, quick. Please, more spread, more spread, more spread. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, by this impartation, I enter into the season of creativity. I enter into the realm of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is manipulating failure, disappointment, reproach in my life, by the impartation, the yoke is destroyed. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. I am entering my season of favor with God, favor with man. By this impartation, help us will rise up for my glorious destiny. Help us will rise up for my breakthrough. Help us will rise up for my appointed blessing. Lift up your voice and pray. By this impartation, doors of success, doors of progress open for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice, begin to declare it. What you declare is what you declare. What you declare is what God will bring to pass for you. Lerandoya, Zeketeria, Esudene, Lishapa, Ratakato, Jesus Seketalia, Elabran de Clecoteso, Jesus Seketeria, Lapero, Leclehi, Eroshiklo, Pabran, Nerado, Satalia. No more failure, any power on assignment to level me to the floor. By this impartation, 
I terminate your assignment. I terminate your assignment. Lift up your voice, begin to declare. I refuse to go down. I am going forward. I am going forward. I am making progress. Declare it. The hand of God will establish it. So keep me frustrated. Let them be disappointed. Let them be disappointed by this impartation. I recover my lost glory, my lost success. I recover my lost opportunity. Lift up your voice and pray by this impartation. Those that you are shot against me, they are declared open now. Lerande ya katalia, sheklobe bredi yaleta. You are recovering. You are recovering. You are recovering everything the enemy stole from you. You are recovering everything the devil stole from you. By this impartation, you will recover. You will recover. You will recover by the power of God. You will recover. You will recover. Layande kopreketelia. Jekuteke elondere tolia In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In case you are with your old man to put it on your head, in case you don't have anyone, put your hand on your head. By this mantle upon you, whatever look like a witchcraft veil against your life, they are swallowed up by fire. Any evil decision and embargo fired against your career, against your business, let that embargo be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. From today, the heavens over your career and business is declared open. We are the enemy vowed you will never succeed. I decree by this impartation, the doors are declared open. Say amen like a believer. Any power sponsoring rejection for you, I declare the assignment terminated. Amen. From today, things will work well. Amen. By the impartation resting upon you now, enjoy favor with God and with man. Amen. Any blessing you have been struggling to get, from today, be cheaply delivered. Amen. Whoever is connected to your success and your career by the four winds of the spirit, I command them to look at you. You will no longer be stranded in the journey of life. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for the Lord. Just turn and follow this man right now.